Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to the repair layer. This video will be a bit different in comparison to the stuff I've uploaded previously. However, as the repair I'm about to show you in this video doesn't seem to be documented in good detail for this particular car, I decided to film the entire process and upload it for other people to use as reference. The stunning piece of technology we'll be working on today is a Toyota RAV4 Mark II from 2001 with a 1.8 liter 1ZZ FE petrol engine in a two-wheel drive configuration. <laughs> this particular engine is available on RAV4 models made from 1999 to 2005. In this video, we will take a look at what causes a high idle RPM problem with this particular engine and how to fix it with only a minimal amount of parts and tools required. If you have a RAV4 with this engine, you are likely aware that normally during a cold start, the engine tends to idle at around 1800 to 2000 RPM. And then the idle speed gradually drops as the engine warms up to a working range of about 800 to 1000 RPM. This car, however, constantly stays idling at around 1800 RPM regardless of the engine temperature, as you can see here. Additionally, an idle speed that jumps around or is very low somewhere in the 400-500 RPM range, even during cold starts, can also be caused by the same misbehaving components. The main cause for these idle speed issues is the malfunctioning of the idle air control valve, or IACV for short. This valve sits right below the main butterfly valve that's connected to the throttle pedal and allows the ECU to adjust the idle speed by regulating the amount of airflow when the accelerator pedal is not depressed. The ECU adjusts the airflow up and down by adjusting how much the IACV is open. Now if the IACV gets stuck in one position or can't move fully in all of its design range, then the ECU cannot properly adjust the idle speed anymore. If the IACV gets stuck in an open position, the engine idles abnormally fast as too much air is allowed into the engine. If the IACV gets stuck in the closed position, the car idle speed will be too low, and the car may even stall. This is because normally, the throttle valve is set to allow about 90% of the required idle airflow, while the IACV provides the remaining 10%, and also allows the ECU to fine-tune the airflow as required. There are two main causes for a stuck IACV. Firstly, the IACV is connected to the engine's coolant loop. The coolant can leak through the gasket into the valve area, resulting in corrosion that can seize the bearings or the valve itself in place. Secondly, the IACV can get sticky from the crankcase gases that get vented into the air intake, where they condense and form a thick sludge. This video will show you how to dismantle the throttle body and clean or replace the IACV valve to fix your idle speed problems. To do this repair, you will need various tools like a socket spanner with deep socket bits, pliers, screwdrivers, and an adjustable wrench. Other tools that you may find useful include a Dremel with a cutting wheel and brush attachments, as well as an air compressor. For consumables, you'll need some carb cleaner, anti-seize penetrating spray, some rags, and some all-purpose oil for bearing lubrication. For parts, I recommend buying a new IACV gasket before starting this procedure. Sorry, I don't have a part number for it, but you can find these on eBay if you search for RAV4 IACV gasket. And I'll also add a link to one of those in the video description. I also recommend the following screws. The first in the list is optional, you might be able to reuse the original ones, but the other ones are pretty much mandatory. That's because the screws these are meant to replace have pentalobe slots, which you likely won't have a suitable screwdriver bit for laying around. If after taking out your IACV valve, you find that it's badly corroded and beyond any cleaning, the exact part number is the following. With all those details out of the way, it's time to get to the IACV valve, and to do that we need to take out the entire throttle body, so let's see how it's done. Pop the hood and get your socket wrench. Unscrew these two nuts and remove the engine cover. Unclamp the air filter and unscrew the air intake hose clamps.
and disconnect the MAF sensor, then remove the top part of the air filter box. Here you can see the intake of the IACV. The IACV itself is bolted to the underside of the throttle body. To the left of it is the motor that plugs into the wiring harness, and to the right you can see the two hoses that connect the IACV to the coolant loop. To remove the throttle body, you need to disconnect all of the hoses. Firstly, unclip and disconnect the negative crankcase ventilation hose and move it aside. Then, disconnect the positive crankcase ventilation hose from the PCV valve. Next, we disconnect the EVAP system hose. It's also a good idea to plug these hoses to prevent dust or dirt getting inside while working on the engine. Next, disconnect the throttle position sensor seen on the right and the IACV valve motor on the bottom left. Lastly, you need to disconnect the two coolant lines seen here. I was struggling to reach the clips with my pliers, so I ended up removing the bottom portion of the air filter to get better access. With the hoses and cables disconnected, you can now unscrew all the nuts and bolts holding the throttle body in place. There are two nuts to be removed on the top. Next, two bolts and two nuts on the front of the throttle body. Note that you need deep socket bits to remove the two nuts on the top. Lastly, you need to remove the metal plate that holds the bottom left corner of the throttle body. It is held by one bolt screwed into the front of the engine block. Loosen it up with your spanner and finish unscrewing it by hand to make sure it doesn't drop down somewhere into the abyss below the engine block. Now you can remove the throttle body from the engine. Rest the throttle body on the front of the engine bay and disconnect the throttle cable by turning the butterfly valve to the open position and then pushing out the end of the throttle cable out of the plastic frame. Mine was seized in place due to corrosion, so I gave it a spray of penetrant and a few hits from either side to get it loose. Lastly, loosen the top nut that holds the throttle cable tube and take the tube off the throttle body. Before getting giddy with excitement that you finally got the throttle body off the engine, don't forget to plug the air intake with something to make sure no dirt or bugs get inside. So here we have our throttle body. I suggest you get a proper working area ready, as well as some decent rubberized gloves for better grip. Here's our IACV valve. It's attached to the throttle body with three bolts. Spray on some penetrant spray on them and leave to soak for a while. These bolts can get seized up very badly. Once done soaking, find a well-matching bit to prevent stripping the heads and remove the bolts. If none of your screwdriver bits seem to fit well, inspect and scrape out any dirt from the screwdriver slots. As you can see, the state of these bolts is pretty bad. Once the bolts are out, pry off the IACV away from the throttle body and inspect the parts. I'm not seeing any coolant leaks here, though the gasket does look a little bit crusty. One of the IACV vents, however, looks extremely dirty. Presumably all of this dirt is sediment from the condensed crankcase gases coming in from the PCV. The valve itself is also covered in carbon deposits, which are not that bad considering this was likely not clean since the car left the factory, which was about 20 years ago at this point. The next step is to remove the IACV motor. These two bolts have some nasty pentalobe security heads, which in Toyota's language likely means f*** you buy a new part. I couldn't find any pentalobe bits in any of the bit sets I had on hand, so after trying to remove the bolts with various brute force methods,
I finally managed to get them out by making the sides of the heads flat with a dremel and unscrewing them with an adjustable wrench. Once the bolts are out, carefully pull off the IECV motor and mine this thin metal tab while also making sure not to lose the rubber o-ring. And now the moment of truth, does the valve actually still spin? Oh, that is grim. You can probably tell from my reaction there that the valve felt very rough and while it did move, it needed a lot of force. To clean the valve, use copious amounts of carb cleaner spray and spin it around to get the initial layer of gunk out. I also used some penetrant spray again as it contains lubricants to help loosen up the bearings too. In general, don't skimp on the carb cleaner spray and don't worry about removing the grease from the bearings as we will have to apply some oil to them later anyway. I noticed that a lot of the gunk was stuck quite badly so I used a Dremel with a small soft brass attachment to clean up the surfaces that were easy to reach. Oh, no. Lastly, once you have the valve spinning somewhat freely, spray it with some lubricating penetrant again and use an air compressor nozzle inserted into either side to force the valve to spin very fast for a couple of minutes. <laughs> This will polish away any remaining dirt or scuffs and scratches and make it spin completely smoothly. Now if you don't have an air compressor, then you could also attach the valve to a drill bit with some duct tape and spin it around using a drill. The end goal here is to have the valve turning completely freely. Once the valve moves smoothly, lubricate the bearings properly with some oil. A couple of drops is all it takes and make sure you oil both of the bearings one that's next to the magnetic shaft that goes into the motor and the other one that's close to the end of the coolant section. Clean the motor cavity with some carp cleaner and add a drop of oil in there too. Make sure all of the surfaces are nice and clean. The original rubber o-ring seen here but was a bit worn so I decided to replace it. Usually you can find reasonably similar o-rings in universal kits like this one. When you don't have a perfect match, try to use a thicker one like I did here. Make sure the motor mating surface on the IECV is also clean. Then coat the o-ring with some oil and set it in place. Now, making sure that the small metal tab is pointing upwards, as seen here, Carefully insert the shaft back into the motor cavity. Remember those two nasty bolts I wrecked when disassembling the IECV? Well, as luck would have it, the length and pitch are quite standard, so I had them in one of my kits. As the original bolts have wide flat heads, the replacement bolts need some washers. Screw in the bolts and make sure to tighten them both equally. Once you're finished, you can inspect if the IECV is moving correctly by trying to turn the valve using a screwdriver, as shown here. Once released, it should immediately spring back into its original position. I spent some time off-camera cleaning up the throttle body too. You need to make sure that the cavities that go towards the IECV are spotless, as seen here. Additionally, Make sure to clean the throttle valve too, as a dirty throttle valve can also mess with the idle airflow. I used the brush bit to clean out the area where the gasket goes. Keep in mind that any dirt here can result in coolant or vacuum leaks. Before reassembly, dust everything with compressed air again. Make sure that the new gasket matches the old one. Then cover the gasket as well as the mating surfaces with a bit of oil and insert everything into place. The original bolts were pretty nasty, 
and while I had bolts with matching threads in my little kit, they were too long. So I cut them to length using an angle grinder. Naturally, this is not the nicest solution, but it should work just fine. Screw in the bolts and make sure everything is tightened well. Lastly, I recommend cleaning off any rust or corrosion from the idle stop screw, as this can also mess with the idle airflow. Now it's time to put the throttle body and the other parts back into the engine. Back in the engine bay, make sure to clean out all of these cavities to prevent any nasty dirt from possibly migrating back into the IECV valve we just cleaned. Give the throttle body gasket a good clean too, and cover it with some oil. Reattach the throttle cable to the throttle body and tighten down the throttle cable guide tube. Make sure to clean and oil the surface of the throttle body and plop it back into its place. Then replace all the nuts and bolts taken out originally. Don't forget to reattach the plate that goes between the bottom left bolt of the throttle body and screws into the engine block. Once all the nuts and bolts are back in place, we reconnect the coolant hoses. Then, the TPS and the IECV wiring. Next, the EVAP system hose. Next, the negative crankcase ventilation hose. Lastly, the positive crankcase ventilation hose gets reattached to the PCV. Now the final steps before we can check out our work is to reassemble the air filter box, reconnect the air intake hose to the air filter box, and reconnect the MAF sensor cable. And now we can get to see whether our fix worked. As you can see, it's a massive difference between the before and after. You can see how now, the idle speed falls down as the engine heats up, unlike previously, where it was constantly stuck at the maximum. If you got this far, congratulations! The last steps are to put back the engine cover and screw it down, then take the car out for a test drive. I hope you found the guide useful, and thank you very much for watching.